Hey guys, it's Trina at John's Furniture Repair. Thanks for joining me again. Starting a new project here. Uh, it's the little wash stand that I've got here and uh, the customer is wanting to change a few things about it and also take it to this color. So basically what we're gonna do is prep the whole thing and this color is actually a paint with a glaze. So I'm gonna get a base color paint on the whole thing and then do a black glaze over top. I think it'll be um, a nice look for this piece. They're just looking to update it to keep it in the family. And I always appreciate when people do that. So thumbs up. So the, the changes that we're making, uh, we've got new hardware. We've got some really beautiful old uh, hand carved handles, but they're just too ornate for what they're going for in their home. And they want more of a mission style look. Uh, they've also, on the bottom had a little porcelain knob. Very classic, but not what they're going for. So the customer has ordered uh, some nice hardware here. I think it'll look really good. Let me just get one out of the bag for you. You can see what it is. It's kind of going in a more kind of mission style piece that's like a hammered steel, black steel kind of look for the drawers. And then for the doors, or the, yeah, the doors, um, we've got like a little hanger type piece. So that'll look good. I think definitely with this uh, color, it'll really update the piece. I think that'll look really good. All right, and so the other thing that we're doing to this piece is uh, removing these handles on the side because they, they said they just don't need them and they're a little bit too ornate, bringing the piece a little bit away from what they want. And then this piece here, um, we're taking down all of this ornate stuff and we're actually going to be cutting it to just having a simple backboard instead of one that's got all the uh, crazy stuff going on. So, I mean, this might be sacrilegious to some people, but like I said before, if someone can use what they have, something that's uh, in their family and they want to change it to make it work in their house, I think that's awesome. I think keeping these things around uh, and making them work for your space is the best possible solution for a lot of these antiques that just don't match your home decor these days. So I'm happy to do that for, for people. So what I'm gonna do is just get everything taken apart, get all the hardware off, and uh, start prep sanding it for uh, paint, uh, for painting. All right, let's get at it. Hopefully soften this glue. These pieces are really hard to get out. They have these blocks behind them that were glued in here behind this little panel. So it's really hard to knock it off from the other side. I was able to do it on the other side, but not this side. So this front block just came off. And that way I can get this block off of here, which is holding on half of it. And then hopefully pop this out here, but I can't really hit this too much because this is barely anything here either. So if this is really glued on here, it'll just break this whole piece off as well. So I'm hoping that the heat will help. Just gonna give it two minutes on the joint here and then see if I can get some movement. If this doesn't work, then what I'll do is drill into this piece, hollow it out so that I can break the dowel off of the glue joint inside, and then I'll just have to replace the dowel before I give it back to them. There we go. Good. 
awesome. A little bit of heat never hurt anybody. So that's good there. This cracked when I took off the other side, so I'll just get a little bit of glue in there and repair that, but those are both off now. Uh, the drawer slides inside are pretty worn, so I'll probably replace those. They go up here, the drawer slides against them. Same thing with this side, I'll replace that as well. The middle one seems to be fine still. Uh, the interior, the shelves, not really great, so I might put something a little bit more substantial in there just to give it a little bit more beefy, a beefy look. And I mean, this joint isn't great here either. You can see a big gap here, and I'm wondering if it's just this piece at the corner. If I just take this whole piece off and re glue this area. the gaps that I've seen. <sighs> that came off terribly. Okay. This last bit of that piece that you removed on the other side. Clean that up. Yeah, it looks like just this piece behind it here has flared out, so I need to get this piece back in on this joint, and then when I put this piece back on, it should be closed up here too. So I'll have to take that off. It's fun that they have two pieces here like that. Let's see if I can just get that off all the way. Deal with that joint properly. This entire board is broken in here now that I'm working with this. Oh, we're getting into a can of worms with this piece. Okay, so there's a nail that goes through here and here and then one that goes through here. So that's why it's becoming an issue. I think I'm gonna try to pry it this way though and hope that that nail just pulls that other piece out because it's already it's probably broken up there too hey guys talk about a can of worms i've decided that this needs a lot more work than initially thought so i've removed the entire front frame and decided to put new drawer runners in on both sides of the cabinet the center one i'm still probably going to keep I've made a new shelf out of 3 8 ply that I will stain and finish before it goes in here. Um, other thing that I've got finished, I've got the holes on the cabinet plugged on both sides here from that handle we removed. The back panel had some big tear outs from the cabinet coming loose. So those are repaired. Uh, other things that I've repaired are, this is the front frame that I removed and the nails that they had in there because it was so loose had started to break away uh, the frame on, on the front face. So that's getting re-glued all over the place. And then over here, we've got those pieces with the holes that we repaired um, getting a little bit of a glue because the nails did some damage on those as well. So that's getting re-glued. Uh, I've got one of the pieces that we had to drill out the center of that new dowel being put into this. We're not finishing these. I'm just fixing them to give them back to the customer to keep with the cabinet for if they want them in the future. So those are in clamps and plugs are ready to go into those guys as well when they're dry. Other than that, um, I think that's it. That uh, We got the top off and I just needed to re-glue that whole top area. It just was loose and broken nails and all kinds of stuff. 
um, the, these are beautiful nails, but the problem with these cast iron nails is after after uh, so many years, they get pretty brittle. So a lot of them have broken inside the cabinet and weren't holding anymore. So I've got a lot of pieces that I had to pull out of the cabinet that were just broken and um, not doing their job anymore. So that's why it was so loose. And I mean, the glue is old and dried up, as you can see. So it's now just getting things back together. This is the center uh, drawer glide. And I've added a piece of cherry um, to the, the base where, the, where it slides on. On one side, it was just a little bit worn. So I think that'll be fine. Um, I've used cherry on both sides for the slides um and the guides so those will be good it's a little bit harder than the softwood they had in there and uh, yeah so i'm not even close to getting to the finishing stages or prepping or anything yet just repairs so um i guess i can start next with the drawers which the bottoms are a little bit separating on those drawers they're a little bit gross and cruddy and disgusting so those need some cleanup um, this guy here, we're going to be cutting off at about this point, so straight across, and then uh, figuring out some kind of a, a profile, probably not as crazy of a, a router out as this, but something that I can carry through to the end here. I have to figure out that for design yet. And the doors need a little bit of repair. I've got to make sure they're not loose. But there's just a couple of chunks. Um, there are some gaps in the door, so if they are loose, I'll be regluing them. Same thing here. Looks like someone's put a nail or a screw or something in here, so I gotta be careful about that. And uh, there's a little bit of of misalignment, so it looks like someone's repaired it at some point. It wasn't the greatest, so that makes me want to take it apart. So those will need some work. And uh, other than that, the top looks like it's in pretty good condition. Um, really not that bad considering uh, but I think what I'll do just because I like my top finishes to be uh, super durable is probably strip the top uh, before I do the lacquer paints and uh, that way I can get a good adhesion and I also want my um, if you remember our stain color is this so it's a lacquer paint with a black glaze so i want my black glaze to be able to sink into the green to get it to look like this you can see there's a lot of black in the green so if i strip this i can open up a bit more of that green and get a better uh, match to this sample so that's what i'll keep working on it's a can of worms like most old furniture but uh, i do get carried away because i have way too much fun so I'll just keep on chugging here. Okay, guys. So this is where I've gotten on this thing. Uh, basically, I had to rebuild this whole front face frame and uh, do quite a bit of gluing and clamping and, and different types of fasteners to get everything to sit nicely. Now, the sides of this cabinet have shrunk over the years, so I had to shave off. Um, a little bit of wood here to get things to come back together on both sides and uh, so I've been fiddling and swearing and getting this thing to fit right all all morning um, you never you never get used to the challenges antiques bring you but it's fitting pretty good now I've actually got a uh, fastener that's come in from the front and I did the same size plug as uh, we did on the other side here. Um, but because they didn't have a joint here or anything holding the, the front face frame to the cabinet itself, I just needed to add something to keep it in place there. So that was my solution there. So that'll all get sanded. I've got epoxy putty on everything right now. Um, the other thing I did was uh, sand the base, get that all cleaned up inside and inside. It's all nicely sanded to 180. Um, I've refit all the drawers. They've got everything sanded and cleaned up inside. Uh, I've slid the drawer bottom forward more so that there's not that gap at the front. So that's all done. Uh, on the interior, I've got new drawer slides, guides, 
uh, on, on both sides and this one's repositioned. Uh, so everything inside here was rebuilt and re-glued as well. So now that when you put the drawer in, it slides and stops nice and flush with the face frame. So that took quite a bit of time just getting that to fit right, but it's worth getting the, the fit when, when you can. So that's dry. Uh, I've added, because these stringer bars that go across the cabinet here hold everything together, um, I've added a couple of fasteners here and here just so, so I can keep things closed up top. Now the, the top itself usually does that job, but it's actually not attached to the sides. The attachment from the top to the sides is through these stringers. So I need to make sure that these guys are fastened really well to the side to be able to hold this whole cabinet together. So that's why I decided to do that. And uh, so that when the top does get fa fastened back on through this hole here, this hole, that hole, these two holes, that these uh, stringers will, will keep the sides on and the top just kind of sits on on these guys. It has no structural uh, help at all. So uh, other than that, we did some repairs to the back. This panel was broken and popped out on this side. So uh, this was all taken off and re-glued and popped back on. I kept the old nails back here because it looks good. Uh, these two screws here are holding the drawer slide in the center. Um, those were necessary. So I've got those going on there. Um, same thing on this side, all the plugs are filled and uh, we've got a nice flush, no gaps anymore on this piece. You remember there were big gaps on the front, front face frame here. There's still a little bit, so I just put some epoxy putty in there, but they're all as close as I can, I can get them. So a lot less than it was and the drawers are fitting nice and square. I might lift this one up a little bit with a, um, a glide on the bottom of that one, but other than that, it's looking good. So the other thing that I got to do, doing was um, on the shelf, I did an edge tape, decided to do a cherry edge tape because that's the edge tape I had and that's what made my decision. So that's ready to go in. And the other thing that I got finished, just bring you guys over here because that's easier. was this back panel. So this was all one piece here before, if you remember when the, the piece was one. So I've actually cut it down to uh, the lowest point I could because they want they didn't want any curly cues and then done a chamfer on the, the side. So that's now just a very simple, uh, about two inch uh, back panel. It's gonna be really low profile, uh, not gonna be super, ornate um, and it'll just uh, kind of quieten up the whole piece on the back. So that needs to be reattached to the back, but that's all good and routered and ready to go. Uh, but yeah, that's as far as I've gotten. It's taken quite a bit of time, uh, usually fitting drawers and putting slides in and getting cabinets to sit right takes quite a bit of time. So uh, remember that if you're ever doing it. And uh, right now I'm just waiting for putty to dry. So I'm gonna do a bit of prep work on pieces that aren't drying and then um, get finally to the, the paint stage. So I'll keep working at it. Okay guys, so I've got the dresser all repaired and prepped and sanded and ready for the base paint. So let's go through the pieces here. I've got this guy all fixed up. Chamfer's looking good on that one. Got our doors fixed. I didn't end up re-gluing these. They were pretty solid, so just did some work in the corners. Here. The drawers. Uh, the hardware's a little different, and the old hardware wasn't really centered, so I've got those drilled out for the new hardware before I paint and uh, they're all prepped inside. So we'll do the paint coats first and then take that off to clear coat interior drawers. 
because they need to be encoded as well. Um, seal our plugs here. Everything's prepped, repaired. We won't be painting the interior. That's all going to stay natural. So I've got it up on stilts and it's ready for the first coat. Now, one thing I always do before I paint um, pieces is give them a little clear coat. Uh, so I'm going to do that. It's going to be pretty light because I don't want to fill grain because I want to get a good glaze in the grain on this piece. So just be a really light clear coat just to protect the wood if uh, anybody wants to strip it in the future. So everything's got two coats of the base color and so that'll dry over the weekend. It's Saturday, so I'm not going to work too hard today. And uh, we'll sand it down on Monday and uh, start with the black glaze. And uh, after the black glaze dries for a day, then clear coats and we're done. So stay tuned for more. Hi guys, Trini here with John's Furniture Repair. So we got all the uh, pieces here on the workbench that we painted uh, a couple days ago. They've dried. So what I'm gonna do is the black glaze to get this finish here again. So we're just at this point and we need to fill that grain with black. So just gonna give it a little bit of a sand, barely anything with the 180. And I'm going to take my black glaze and just work it into all the grain. And it's nice that this piece has a nice open grain. We actually decided to strip the whole thing instead of just prepping it, just so I could open it up as much as possible and get all that detail in there. I'm going to do the underside of this here first. Good. And you got it all worked in. You just wipe it off. That looks awesome. Super happy with how this is turning out. A lot of times when your grain just isn't super prominent or open or porous you don't get a lot of that color to hang up and you're working it barely wiping it off but this one's super easy and it's staying really nicely so there we go it's not a perfect bang on match but it's going to be perfect for this one you can see the color is a little bit warmer on this one i could tone that in in the booth but when i'm looking at it here just needs a little bit of warmth on the main part, but we've got that color in the grain, so that's perfect. So I'm gonna get to doing 
the other drawer, the two doors, the back panel, the top, the whole dresser, and uh, let it dry overnight, and then we'll do some toning. Almost lost, you guys. Do some toning uh, in the booth tomorrow in clear coats. All right, thanks, guys. Okay guys, we got the whole thing under black glaze. Looks pretty awesome. I'm loving the finish. So I just wrap around with the side panel there. Everything else stays natural. Good. So that's gonna dry overnight and then all that's left is clear coating the outside and the inside and then installing the hardware and she's done. All right. Okay guys, so I got everything set up in the booth uh, for clear coats. I did a little bit of a tint with Merlin's uh, peach, just a warm, it up a little bit on everything. It's got kind of like a warmish peachy tinge just to come into that sample a little bit more. So everything is ready for top coats. So I'll do at least three top coats on everything and the interior as well as the drawers and that shelf we made. Uh, get everything sealed. So I'll probably do two coats right away, sand it down and then do the final coat. Right. Okay guys, here it is, all finished. Three coats of lacquer, buffed inside and out, all the hardware's on, everything installed. It's looking awesome. So you remember we did our back piece with the chamfer. That's looking a lot more um, mission style like they wanted. Isn't that beautiful grain that you can see with the the black glaze just sitting in there so nicely we've got our drawers uh, all refinished and they're nice and smooth inside the hardware looks pretty awesome I think that hammered steel look looks really nice or iron or whatever you want to call it I love how the doors look you remember there was gaps on all the corners here so that looks a lot better having those filled as well and the interior of this cabinet was all sealed and sanded and it's also nice and smooth. We got a, a new shelf built in there. So that we just kept all natural. We've got one of these little swivel locks that keeps this door in and then this door has a little ball catch that hits a um, note up there. So yeah, looking good. You can see our repairs to those. Remember there was big holes here and here. You can sort of see it, but it really just does kind of fade into the side of the cabinet. And then we also put another fastener in the front here. You can see this one a little bit more um, here and somewhere here. It's hidden really nicely anyways. Same on the side there, you can't really see them. So that worked out really nicely. I'm really happy about that. It looks pretty good and I'm excited to give it back to the customers. They're coming tomorrow to pick it up. And uh, I think they're gonna be pretty pleased. So thanks for joining me on another one, guys, and stay tuned for the next project. Don't forget to like and subscribe.